stress. Something all of us have in common. I don't believe there is one single living organism on this earth that has not faced stress. I'm going to make this episode short and simple. Okay, I have a feeling many of you will not go that far. However, we have to be aware of how we handle our stress. Holding in frustration or expressing frustration quickly are two extremes, yet both are inappropriate behaviors. It can lead to chronic ailments as well as being fired or arrested. <laughs> Well, all jokes aside, stress is nothing to take lightly. According to the American Psychological Association, 33% of Americans never discuss ways to manage stress with their health care provider. As you may know, stress is one of the main factors of the rise in obesity and other health related disorders. This is alarming since more than one third, which is 36.5% of US adults have obesity. This is based on CDC statistics. Do you see the correlation? While doing my research on this topic, I was surprised to find stats that directly connect stress in childhood and the emergence of autoimmune disorders in adulthood. According to the National Institute of Health, a study of a population that included 8,293 women and 7,064 men with autoimmune disorders found 10% were emotionally abused, 28% physically abused, 21% sexually abused, 27% dealt with household substance abuse, 19% with mental illness in the home, 13% with domestic violence, 5% lived with a family member with a criminal record, and 23% had a history of parental separation or divorce. Moreover, the National Institute of Health reports a study that showed childhood maltreatment was associated with elevated CRP levels in adults 20 years later, suggesting that childhood maltreatment independently increases inflammation later in life. On a personal note, I am a person with highly elevated CRP levels. In fact, when I initially dealt with the change in my health two years ago, I was found with very high CRP levels. That's when my family physician felt it was important for me to see a rheumatologist. This is a specialist that deals with disorders such as lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia, and other autoimmune disorders affecting the musculoskeletal system. I've dealt with my share of childhood stress for sure. Anyway, the National Institute states gastrointestinal diseases such as peptic ulcer and ulcerative colitis are known to be greatly influenced by stress. Peptic ulcers occurs twice as often in air traffic controllers as in civilian co-pilots and occurs more frequently among air traffic controllers at high stress centers. The National Institute also discussed migraine sufferers, something I know too well since the age of eight years old. They mentioned that diet may precipitate migraine headaches for some people. However, predominant thoughts on the cause of migraine pertains to emotional stress and tension. 
Feelings of anxiety, nervousness, anger, or repressed rages are associated with migraine. This attack may be aborted when the individual gives vent to underlying, underlying personality. This is what the National Institute states. <laughs> well, a typical migraine sufferer is a perfectionist, ambitious, rigid, orderly, excessively competitive, and unable to delegate responsibility. I can agree with most of that. The National Institute states, studies in animals, mostly rats, reveal the link between stress and progression of cancerous tumors. Chronic and acute stress, including surgery and social disruptions, appear to promote tumor growth. They explain, although the evidence is conclusive in animals, the human being is too complex to form a definitive correlation. In my opinion, when anything is imbalanced in the body, one is at risk for genetic mutations and other mishaps within our cells. Lastly, the National Institute discussed several articles that suggest there is a strong evidence that psychological stress is a significant risk factor for coronary heart disease and coronary heart disease mortality. Are you surprised? Well, enough of the correlation of stress and how it can wreak havoc basically on our bodies. What can we do to manage it? I like solutions. First, identify the stressor. Is it an upcoming engagement you need to attend? Are you working against a deadline? Have you lost a loved one recently? Are your finances not up to par? I bet you can say yes to at least one of these questions that I'm asking. I wish I could say the solution is to forget about it, if it were that simple. The important thing is to identify what is causing you to feel like your world is crashing and to take a step back. Is it anything you can control? Possibly yes, probably no. But you can definitely control the way you handle things. Not discussing it is a detriment because it will come out eventually and most likely in the wrong place, at the wrong time. Just like that gentleman in the office at the beginning of this segment. So how do you handle it? According to Eckhart Tolle, a lot of our emotions, whether it's rage, sadness, anger, hurt, grief, it stems from our ego. Everyone has an ego. Young Toll explains, the ego is how we identify with several things on this earth. For instance, I identify as a nurse, mother, wife, sister, daughter, cousin, sorority member, friend, if any of those identifiers are challenged by someone or something, I will most likely feel my whole world will be crashing. My ego will be shattered. When we transcend to another level of consciousness, we slowly move away from holding on to those identifiers for dear life feeling as if these roles are the only thing that makes us special. But instead, just offer the best that we can give while living in those roles. To 
provide more clarification, Toll explained when he was a counselor and spiritual teacher, he spoke to a terminally ill woman who came into his office upset because she believed her caregiver stole her deceased grandmother's diamond ring that she cherished. This woman felt as if her whole world was crashing, so to speak. The only reason why it left her finger was because her hands were too swollen due to the cancer that was taking a toll on her body. Toll asked this woman in his office a few questions. One was, has who you are become diminished by the loss? After a few minutes, the woman was more at peace. This may sound like a trivial question to you because you're not that woman and you did not identify with that ring, but think of something you identify with. If this is taken away, how would you feel? If you answer devastated, then you're aware of your ego. The ego can be the cause for the paramount of your grief. Going through a divorce and losing the title as a wife can be a blow to your ego. Being a person with wealth and losing a substantial amount of money can be a blow to your ego. That promotion on the job that you felt you deserved was given to someone else. That could be a stressor and blow to your ego, especially when you can use the extra money that comes with the promotion. A hard one that I'm still working on is handling my ego when it comes to losing a loved one through death. However, when I think about it, if it's a loved one, death of a friendship, death of a marriage, all can be devastating because that identity is gone. But Toll explains it's a work in progress. However, when we separate ourselves from relying on these identifiers, we become more at peace if they are suddenly taken away. When you are more at peace, there's more clarity with your thoughts on how to tackle the situation at hand. This leads to more rational solutions. You know, looking for another copy machine that actually works instead of breaking the one that doesn't work into pieces with the office computer. <laughs> on a serious note, I can say take a deep breath, count to 10, Yada, yada, yada. <laughs> These are good strategies so you can lower your blood pressure when something angers you. But digging deeper can help you in the long run with any situation that occurs. Assess your identity. Do you feel as if you're a better person because you're living in that role? Or do you feel as if you're still the greatest person regardless of that role. When you start to analyze these things, you will slowly understand some stresses may not deserve all of that anger, rage, upset you give. You may be able to step back and look at it objectively. Did this lack of promotion open my eyes to searching for another job that may appreciate me more? Or did this lack of promotion prove to me that I may need to step up my game and my work performance so the next time around I may be picked? Did this financial heartache happen because of my lack of understanding when it comes to finances? Therefore, I need to research on how to manage it better in the future by seeking guidance from others who may be savvy with finances. Or do I wallow in sadness because I'm struggling to make ends meet? Which will benefit me in the long run? Did that spouse leave because I'm no longer worthy of being loved? 
or did he or she leave because they wanted to and it had nothing to do with my ability to be loved because I am worthy of being loved. Changing your perception by not feeding into your ego can ultimately lead you to a better understanding of things when life throws a curveball. Throw some monkey wrench, whatever saying you want to say. I'm still working on co connecting with the loss of a loved one, as I said, by death. However, because of my spiritual belief, and if my loved one believes in the afterlife and accepting the Lord and Savior, he or she will be missed, but will be at peace. So that is a good thing over after all, basically. Still working on that because the flesh sees things differently. However, I'm starting to find less things taxing on my life because of changing my thought process, thus make my stress levels lower, thus creating a better condition for my body to function on a whole. After all, the mind, body, and spirit are connected. Keep it balanced. Please like, comment, and share. Let me know your thoughts on this. And as always, blessings to you.